we each got a margarita. We're to get into the sacrifice zone. Where someone is going to ride you. They're not going to ride you. That's not right. We're Simone and Giovanni. And over the last three years, we quit our jobs, moved to Mexico with our dog, got married, and began our journey to visit all 32 states of Mexico. Join us in this episode where we take you on an adventure through Tulum to marvel at the ancient ruins of Tulum Archaeological Zone and its lesser-known cousin of Coba, before cooling down in a stunningly clear scene of there. We're starting our day off here in Playa del Carmen, waiting for our tour operator to pick us up at a meeting point. Where are we going now? So we're actually going to be spending the entire day at Tulum. And if you watched our previous video on Tulum, we didn't have anything good to say about Tulum. We're not huge fans of the place. But the thing is, when we went there, we didn't go see the ruins. We didn't go visit a cenote there. So we thought, you know what? We didn't really give Tulum a full fair chance. So that's what we're going to be doing today to see if we can change our minds about Tulum. Once we grabbed our seats, we enjoyed a pleasant hour-long drive south towards the Tulum archaeological site. Yeah, so we've just arrived at our first location of the day, which is the Tulum archaeological zone. Archaeological zone, yes. Okay. Ooh, okay. We are here. Are you excited to see the ruins? Yes, I am excited. Actually, it's been a while, eh? Yeah. I think probably six years. Mm. Gracias. Good bracelet. Hey, yes, I'm all braceleted up. <laughs> So this is a very, very important tip. When you arrive at the Tulum archaeological zones, Mark, our tour guide, let us know. But we know this region, so we already know. But you'll see these like um, guys dressed in their traditional Mayan outfits. Our tour guide said that they get very aggressive if you point your camera in their direction because then they're going to come and surround you, they're going to embarrass you, and they're going to make you pay them like $20, $30. Yeah. So just yeah, beware. It's very common in this region, so yeah. don't, get, don't, don't get surprised. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's huge. Look, he was. <laughs> Hot. About 7,000 degrees already mm. today. So we just spent the first 45 minutes in the archaeological zone with our tour guide, his name is Mark, and he has so much information about Mayan culture to share, it was super interesting. Um, I know Giovanni learned a thing or two, but now we have another 45 minutes, hour, hour and a half, something like that, to roam around and take pictures and really just look at everything ourselves. Yeah, something interesting, uh, I actually went uh, to university with Mike. Like I didn't know he was going to be in the tour, so uh, the <laughs> first time I seen him in, in a long time. Along the entire archaeological zone, you will find a lot of like info boards where you will get a lot of information about the region, about... The... However, I think what you get from the guides is like valuable information. The guides definitely have more knowledge in their brains than what they share on these little boards here. We've been to Chichen Itza before and we decided not to go with the guide. And it was cool because we got to go and see all of the, the ruins and the sites and stuff, but we didn't actually learn anything. Whereas when you go with a guide, they are typically super knowledgeable about the Mayan culture, which is the, the culture that developed this, um, this archaeological zone. It wasn't an archaeological zone at the time, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> the city back in the, the day. The city, yes. <laughs> So we actually built this tour through Get Your Guide, which is an online booking platform. Basically what you'll do is you will enter in your location and it will pop up with a ton of tours within the location, all the different price points offering different itineraries. But the thing that we love the most about it is every single tour that's listed comes with a ton of reviews underneath, which helps us to best determine which tour is best for us. As opposed to just purchasing tours off of the random vendors all over this region of Mexico, those vendors are trying to sell their particular tour, so they'll tell you that it's good, but I mean, you don't really have that peace of mind. With Get Your Guide, we can book with confidence knowing that every experience available is provided by knowledgeable local experts. Find the link in our video description to check it out for yourself. And Tulum, what does Tulum mean? Tulum means... In Mayan? I forgot. Wall. C walled city. And something interesting that Mark was telling us is that the city wasn't built for safety or protection. Said it was built for the upper class and the upper class would mean gods, demigods, everyone else, all the peasants lived on the other side. 
and then one day the peasants revolted and killed all the, the high society. So yeah, there's a story of Tulum. Bob's your <laughs> uncle. <laughs> So this is the star of the show. Something that Mike also was telling is like the main uh, pyramid was actually used kind of like a lighthouse back in the day just to uh, protect the ships. Yeah. Beautiful ocean views over here. Beautiful, Beautiful. Mayan views over here. <laughs> I mean, about the Mayans. <laughs> and ancient Mayan views over there. Many years ago, actually, when I came here with my family, you were able to get in like the beach area and swim all day if, if you wanted, but it seems like you cannot do it anymore. Yeah, and there was no such thing as sargasm back then. But I think it was very minimum. Now it's like very it's prominent. very rare to find a clear day. Yeah. yeah. If you're thinking of coming to these ruins for an entire day, honestly, the grounds are not that huge and it is so cooking hot that, I mean, you don't need to spend the whole day here. I think a good two, three hours to plan to be here is perfect and then plan the rest of your day around the area of Tulum or book a tour where everything is done. Yeah, I mean, you. You can, if, you, if you do it by yourself, yes, like Simon said, two to three hours enough. At but most. I mean, depending on the tour you're coming, but one hour, hour and a half, I think it's... It's also good, yeah. Yeah, so we're pretty much done taking a look around. We got some really beautiful photos. We got some really beautiful views. Like we mentioned earlier, the, the zone is actually not that big. It's not going to take you that, that long to walk through, as opposed to Chichen Itza. Chichen Itza oh, yeah. is just a whole other thing. Chichen Itza is on a different scale. Yeah, it's massive. It's massive and the, the structures are way larger. But yeah, very interesting to come and see this. The views are absolutely spectacular. This is probably one of the highest points on the Caribbean coast. So you don't often get these elevated views of the coast. So that's very special. The part that Giovanni's been waiting for all day. Lunchtime. Oh, uh, lunch, yeah. <laughs> By the way, the lunch is included in this tour. Yes. We're getting to the sacrifice zone. <laughs> I am Simon. <laughs> So as you can see at the entrance of the archaeological zone, if you want to come souvenir shopping, I mean, there are so many massive stalls along here. So part of the package is we get a very quick light lunch. We both got burritos, but you could choose tacos or something else, I'm not sure. Tacos, fajitas, or quesadillas. Or burritos, but we got burritos and a drink, so we each got a margarita. Salud. Salud. And that's yes. Good, eh? Okay, and we're all done with our lunch. Giovanni's still enjoying his margarita, which it was my margarita, which ended up as his, because it's very strong. And actually, I'm feeling a little bit tipsy. Oh, we, don't yeah. drink, we don't drink too much anymore. So we're about to hop back on the bus and head to location number two out of three for the day. So we are at our second ruin of the day, which is the Copa Ruins, which I mean, right off the bat, you can see the entrance is like very casual. It's definitely not as well known as the Tulum Ruins are. But something that I do love about this is, just let me be quiet for a second. Can you hear all those birds? We are literally walking through dense jungle to get to the ruins, which is really awesome. People in this region, their main language or the native language would be Mayan instead of Spanish. So you will hear a lot of people speaking Mayan in this region. There are three ways to go around Cobra Ruins. The first one would be the one where we're going to do, which is on our feet. Second one would be bicycles. You can rent some bicycles here. And the third option would be having like what Mike was saying, a Mayan taxi, which is, how do you call them? A tricycle. Or triciclo. Uh-huh. Where someone is going to ride you. Wait, they're not going to ride you. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> someone is going to take you for a ride. Exactly. And you're going to sit comfortably. 
But we're walking today. It's got an official taxi number even. Taxi? Oh, we're seeing a ruin behind you there, Giovanni. Let's go. <laughs> wow. I must say it's a lot more pleasant to explore these ruins because you've got so much shading from the jungle. However, one thing to keep in mind, you don't have the direct sunlight, but it is humid like crazy here. You can't even, I can't even explain to you. You're just sweating. Okay. And Giovanni is going to explain to us what this is behind us. This is a small poc -a poc field, which was the Juego de Pelota Maya and was a gameplay between two teams or two tribes. But they were using a ball and they were hitting that with, the, with their hips and hitting to the hoops. That's yeah. how you were scoring like goals. The winner was sacrificed, yeah? Funny enough, it's, it, that was your, your prize. There is an old animated movie called The Road to El Dorado. The, and that, the Road to El Dorado. That movie, if you want to learn about this game and mine culture, check it out. <laughs> what is that one by Mel Gibson? Apocalypto. That one's very hectic, but that one also talks about mine culture. That one's that, pretty hectic. That is actually though. That, good. Yeah, it's a uh, very yeah. good one. By the way, if you're interested in traveling to the Riviera Maya, Giovanni and I put together a quick little ebook that explains everything that you need to know before you come here. So if you want to grab that, it is completely free. You just need to sign up to our email newsletter, which you can do in the bio. <laughs> so we found it. This, this pyramid in front of us is the biggest one within Cobra, but it's also the highest pyramid in Quintana Roo. How do you know that? I researched. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. So I think in the camera you guys can't see how tall this is, but this, this pyramid is very tall. When we came here a few years ago, we were actually able to climb up there and I remember being scared because I mean if you slip you, you're gone and everyone in front of you is gone. So I think for safety reasons they close it, but also with the amount of tourism in this region in the last few years, I mean slowly slowly these things are going to get eroded. So I mean it sucks that we can't climb up, but it's also understandable. Well let me just tell you the view from the top, you're above the the tree line so you can just see for kilometers and kilometers it's just beautiful up there so you guys can see Giovanni over there that's this is the scale of the pyramid it's amazing this pyramid is actually called Nohoc Mul I don't remember what Mul is but Nohoc is means big so maybe it's big pyramid big something all right so just to show you guys look at these steps they're super irregular I do actually very clearly remember climbing up this pyramid with my hands and my feet. I wasn't just walking up or walking down. I was climbing up with my hands and my feet and coming down on my bum because it's that high. And when you're at the top, it looks like a big fall if you were to fall. We have very limited time here. So while there might be a lot of other stuff for us to, to see, because Mike was saying that this complex is pretty massive, we don't actually have the time for it. Actually, he said that it was bigger. I think, I don't know if two times or three times bigger than Chichen Itza, and Chichen Itza is it's big. Huge. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to hop onto one of these Mayan tricycles and head back. De regreso? 100 pesos para los dos. 100 pesos. Okay. 100 pesos. 100 pesitos? 100 pesitos. 100 pesos. Gracias, hermano. Okay. Okay. Uh. ¿Cuál es tu nombre? Edwin. Edwin. Sí, cuidado con la, cuidado con oh, la, con la chola. <laughs> Me voy a lose my head. Hola Edwin, gracias. Ubermaya. Sí. Sí. Ubermaya. Ubermaya. Sí. <laughs> well, this is a lot pleasant, a lot more pleasant than walking. We're getting such a beautiful breeze right now. Oh. Las piedras ya están muy deterioradas. Ah, eso ah mañana, fair enough. Según okay. es por la pandemia. Okay. ¿Le van a abrir otra vez, no? Eh, pues está en proceso, es un proyecto de que Ver la forma de que la gente vuelva a subir. Ah, ok. Sí. Pero pues lo principal es conservarla también, ¿no? Exacto, Porque es sí. su principal atracción de aquí, ¿verdad? Claro. Wow. So these are a particular type of bee found in this region. They don't have any stings, but their honey is very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Voy a cortar aquí, en las partes de aquí. Se siente el olor. Ah. So that smell that you'll smell in Tulum, they love to like burn stuff at the um, entrance of hotels and restaurants and things to give it that like mystical vibe. That's the tree. Gracias, Edwin. Gracias. Oh, Tours de Edwin. <laughs> wow. Yay! 
Oh my gosh, that taxi ride was so worth it. Number one, yeah. it was quicker, it was obviously easier. But um, a tour, well, I mean, he's not a tour guide, he drives a taxi and he ended up like taking us on a little tour and explaining yeah. all the things that we wouldn't know otherwise. So that was quite cool and it's a really nice way to support local. So yeah. yeah, if you come here, you can rent the bicycles, but we'd recommend taking a taxi ride because I would imagine most of these guys can tell you things about the area that you wouldn't otherwise know with the condition that you can speak Spanish though. So we are currently on our way to our third and final destination of the day, which, which is a cenote. But given the fact that it is rainy season right now, it is raining. So we're going to be swimming in the rain, which will be cool, but cenotes are freezing. Seems like we're going deep into the jungle. We've been on this road at least five to ten minutes, eh? Okay. Location three out of three, we have arrived. I really love this uh, cenote area because it feels like it's actually quite a way away from the main road. So Yes, and this is not one of the big commercialized ones, which you absolutely want to avoid. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to take a shower to clean all of the like perfume, sunscreen, mosquito repellent, whatever, because we are getting into the cenote. Cenote water is quite it's pure water, so we don't want to like um, add any contaminants. Add any contaminants, yeah. yeah. These are our shower facilities. Could you last some three three baths here, yeah, that? Mm-hmm. Is it chilly? Yeah, a little bit cold. The taste of the still washing. Oh, it's got Okay, so we've got lockers. Okay, finally. It's a burro. The thing about booking these tours is sometimes they'll have like, um, partnerships with these more secluded cenotes where you'll be able to pretty much enjoy the cenote only with your tour group which is what the case is right now if you were to venture to a cenote by yourself specifically along the highway typically they're super busy so one of the most famous cenotes within Tulum is called cenote calavera and you'll see in our last video we went there thinking that we would go in but after we realized what they were trying to charge people we were like, no, yeah. absolutely not. And they only do that because Tulum has gotten so popular in the last few years. So, yeah. And to be honest, Santa Calavera is not like... It's Instagram famous, yeah, but it's not, not that famous. amazing. Yeah. Refreshing. Whew. Hey, art is very good. St. are always freezing, but when it's as hot as it is in the middle of summer, it's just the best thing. So the thing with the cenotes here in this uh, cenote complex we are, um, there are actually two cenotes. This one which is like an uh, open cenote mm -hmm. and there is another cenote which is like a 10 minute walking distance from here which is a cenote type like a cave. This I would say is semi-open. Semi -open. You get open which are completely open and then you get the, the closed cenotes which are typically you have to go into like caves and yeah. stuff. Those are pretty cool yeah. but there's usually not a lot of lights in there. We made new friends. I made new friends. A baby feeding. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Time at the cenote is done, so I think we actually need to change quickly and board the bus. And then we're gonna yeah. drop back in Playa. Hola, perrito hermoso. Did you dig a little hole for yourself? Huh? Must I stop bothering you? All right, so that's it. The entire day is over. We're about to get onto the bus to get back to Playa del Carmen. In the beginning of the video, we said we had made an entire video on Tulum. That was focused on Tulum Town and Tulum Beach Zone, which we don't love. However, if you are thinking of adding Tulum to your itinerary, we'd absolutely recommend it. Going on a tour like this where you get to see cenotes and ruins, which pretty much, in our opinion, are the best of Tulum. 
yeah we had a great day if you actually want to book this trip you can check the link in the description don't mm -hmm. forget also grab your freebie if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to give us a big thumbs up subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed to our channel and that being said we will see you in the next episode Hasta Hasta luego. Luego. join us in the next episode where we share a week in our lives in Playa del Carmen and let you in on a juicy local secret